becomes the center of everyone's attention. And that's my fucking job. And I have to work for that attention. All a baby has to do is lie on its back, fart, shiver, and throw up. I can do that. Half of them most nights, I do that anyway. You get a baby, bald, no teeth, incontinent, everyone loves it. Get a grown up, bald, no teeth, incontinent, and they put you in a home. And who puts you in that home? Your old baby. And the worrying thing is, what happens when this baby grows up? He could turn out to be anything. He could become a policeman. And when I'm old and infirm, he comes to visit me. Oh shit, the kids are coming over. Quick, hide the drugs, hide the drugs. I need a line of speed to get the wheelchair to the bottom on time. But I don't think my baby's going to be a policeman because I'm an optimist. And I don't think in 16 years' time that people want jobs that give them power over other human beings. Because it's got to the point, as you know, with the police now, that they can virtually stop anyone they want to on the street and put their forefinger into that person's rectum. What the fucking hell are you doing? I'm looking for drugs. Well, so am I, that's not how I know about it. <laughs> I like drugs. I like drugs because drugs give me lots and lots of ideas. They're all shit, but they are ideas. <laughs> Some drugs I like more than others. I don't like heroin, for example. I think there's a difference between being laid back and being laid out. <laughs> Not crazy about cocaine. Tried cocaine once, it cost me 60 quid. 60 quid. That's more than I earn in an hour. <laughs> sympathy, sympathy, sympathy. I'm mean, sick of it as well, don't worry. 60 quid, I put a step on my nose, nothing happened for 10 minutes, then 10 minutes later I suddenly felt incredibly bland. <laughs> oh wow, I've spent 60 pounds, and I feel like a roll of wallpaper. I think I'll do some more. You do some more cocaine, you do some more cocaine, you do some more cocaine, your nose crumbles, your teeth crumble and collapse and drop out, and then you drop down dead. And I think that's 60 pounds well spent, don't you? I like drugs that make your brain work. Like speed and vitamins. Make you paranoid. What the fuck's going on? What the going on? Hey, people in my house! Are you talking about me behind my back? Do you know something? I haven't eaten for 14 days. Smell about a cigarette the night. Acid? LSD? Forget it. You can tell LSD is a really stupid drug when you see the clothes of the people who took it in the 60s. <laughs> a lot of people slag the police, give the police a hard time, but I don't think that's fair because I think of myself as a reasonably decent human being. But if you give me a uniform and a truncheon and power over other people, I would be the biggest bastard on the planet. I wouldn't persecute, you know, racial minorities or homosexuals or whatever. I would persecute people I can't stand. The police, school teachers. School teachers gave me a hard time for 15 years. Be nice to stop on the street. What do you do for a living, son? I have a geography teacher. Bet I went, oh, shit. What the fuck are you doing? Looking for an atlas. Keep still, keep still. <laughs> Uh, my boy, my boy has this weird habit all babies have, is that babies will never ever go to the fridge, open the fridge door and drink a bottle of milk. But they will go under the sink, open the cupboard door and drink a bottle of Domestos. <laughs> That's why we had children, we had babies for economic reasons. We had all these aspirin bottles with chart proof tops lying around doing fuck all. Thought we'd better find a use for these. Huh? That's the same reason I take drugs, for economic reasons, like hash, marijuana, pot. My favourite drug, my only problem is one joint, I open the fridge door and eat the contents of the fridge. <laughs> Everything in the fridge goes into my mouth. Even the ice, crunch, 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 crunch. Little bit of green stuff stuck on the wall, scrape it off, eat that too. Here's a milk bottle top, nobody wants, yum, yum, yum. And then, for economic reasons, 
I listened to all those fucking awful records I bought in the 60s. There's two joints and I can listen to dustbins falling downstairs. Sounds great to me. Better get a 12 inch of that, I think. I also worry about having children because it really changes your perspective on the world when you have babies. I didn't realise before my baby was born that there are words in the English language that can break your legs. Darling, I'm pregnant, fucking hell. Ah. <laughs> when I was told I was going to be a father, letters of fire a mile high appeared in front of my eyes, and the letters of fire said, the wanking days are over. Because you cannot wank when you're a dad. Can you? Surely not. Come in, vomit, pass out, my flies open, wake up next day, come in, puke, and say to my child, you have to respect your father. But I don't want to fuck my boy up, especially in terms of sex, because my generation was really screwed up and depressed by guilt in terms of sex. So how do I handle it if I go to my boy's bedroom when he's 15 and find him masturbating? <laughs> ah, hello, son. Uh, uh, having a whack. Um, good idea, I have one too. This is good fun, isn't it? Tell you what, whoever comes first does the washing up. What do you say? This is great, yeah, yeah. The family that whacks together sticks together. In more ways than one. Right, well, I'm going to do the washing up then. Great, all right, thank you. But I want to impress my boy sexually in a small way. I've made a step in that direction. Unlike his father, my son has not been circumcised. Couldn't do that to anybody, let alone a member of my own family. Ah, oh, son, welcome to the world. Now, this is the most sensitive part of your body, okay? I'm just going to chop the end off now, all right? Stop crying. If God didn't want little boys to be circumcised, he wouldn't have invented a pencil sharpener, would he? There's so much bullshit talks about circumcision. People say an uncircumcised penis is more sensitive than a circumcised penis. Well, if that's so, thank God I'm circumcised. Because if my penis was any more sensitive, I couldn't get down the street. I couldn't even watch television. Oh, look, Thora heard. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> you want to go back to my place for a cup of coffee? Yes, please. Forget it. No, forget it. Over there. People say an uncircumcised penis is less healthy than a circumcised penis. How many people do you know have died from having a foreskin? <laughs> so you see, Inspector, the name of the murderer was Ah. Stand back, everyone. Stand back. This man has an uncircumcised penis who could go off any moment. Let me through, let me through. Are you a doctor? No, no, I'm a rabbi. Shh. <laughs> but when my son grows up, when he's 15 or 16, and he wants to know how to handle the world, I shall say, I don't know. I have no fucking idea. I am in jail when you ask me this question. Because I thought I knew how to talk to the police. Excuse me, sir, he said to me. Do you realise you're 10 miles over the speed limit? I'm so fucking smashed, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Give me a break, will you? I've got to be in Liverpool in an hour. Where are we now? Watford? Oh, fuck. Listen, listen, you look like a nice guy. You haven't got any speed, have you? But I can really get my head together for the drive there, you know. I've got to get to Liverpool because I'm starting the vice ring. You know, it's difficult on your own. And I know you carry this stuff around to plant on people, so could you perhaps give me a half a grant? I'll pay for it! Dad, this guy's got some video cassettes on me. Look, you look like a really nice, sensitive guy. You look like a videotape of spastic children having all those sexy donkeys, wouldn't you? What do you mean, get out of the car? Fuck off, you get in! Don't worry, trust me, I'm your inspector. Got no advice at all to give my boy or you. Maybe on one piece of advice I learned, I'll share it with you and I'll fuck off. Happy birthday, Tony. I don't want to see you again. <laughs> the only piece of advice I know that might be of value to anyone is this. Every morning, before breakfast, eat a live frog. <laughs> Nothing worse will happen to you all day. Thank you very much. <laughs>